This week on Inside Boulder News, voters to consider two municipalization ballot measures, CU students get more sustainable digs, live parking information pulls ahead, and historic Boulder makes progress toward preserving community landmarks. Welcome to Inside Boulder News, I'm Mike Benuelos. When city voters go to the polls on November 5th, they will be asked to consider two competing measures related to the possible creation of a local electric utility. Earlier this week, City Council approved a measure that would set a debt limit of $214 million for the acquisition of assets owned by Excel Energy and for any lump sum payment of stranded costs. The measure also includes provisions related to the possibility that the city would serve some customers in unincorporated Boulder County. These provisions provide for representation on a utility advisory board, as well as a guarantee of rates that are equal to those that city customers pay, and the possibility of utility choice by neighborhood. The second measure is on the ballot as a result of a citizen petition effort. This measure does not set a debt limit now, but would require future voter approval before any debt could be issued for a local electric utility. If passed, the measure would also require Boulder to allow potential out-of-city customers to vote on the debt. The measure does not provide a mechanism for accomplishing this. The measure also says that elections of these types could only occur every other year. More information about the ballot items, potential outcomes given that the two options conflict with each other, and the city's analysis is available on the Boulder Energy Future website. As CU welcomes the new freshman class to campus this year, some of them will be lucky enough to live in residence halls that are either new or renovated. Kittredge Central is a brand new facility and renovations to the nearby Kittredge West have been completed as well. Both buildings include green features to improve water and energy efficiency and reduce the university's carbon footprint. And one will be home to students in a new academic program. Both of these, these uh, buildings have a lot of sustainability features in them. For example, you open up the windows, uh, the uh, fan call unit stops so you won't have air conditioning or heat. That way then we won't waste any energy that way. The buildings actually are uh, saving us energy by about 30 to 35 percent more than the baseline energy lines for any average building. That's a humongous saving in terms of energy for these buildings. The rest of the campus also is going that direction as we're building the standard is lead gold for sustainability. And what that means is that the students uh, not only get a chance to have some things in their residence halls to work with, but also we provide them with a lot of education in terms of energy saving, so they become part of the process to help us save energy on campus. Our students are pretty excited about coming to these new buildings over here and we're looking forward to having a great fall semester with them. CU officials say applications were up this year. The university is expecting between 5,700 and 5,800 freshmen. The students come from across Colorado, all 50 states, and 49 international countries. Live seven-day-a-week parking information in downtown Boulder parking garages is one step closer to coming online. New digital signs were installed outside each garage earlier this summer. The next piece of the system to roll out will be a computer network that will drive real-time parking information 24-7. The idea behind all these is that we would be able to count cars in and out all day, and the bottom half of what you see will have a running number count on it. So the people can sit back and say, okay, this garage has got 25 spaces or this garage has 200 spaces, so that people know that there's an opening to come in and come out and as they get full, they will go to full, and it'll switch over and start to say, parking at this garage full, please go to. The data that I have right now is limited to Monday through Friday because it's based upon an older system that only counts the gate arm going up or the gate arm coming down. This is now gonna be a loop system that'll count every vehicle that comes through and across because our garages are free on Saturday and Sunday and we normally just lift the gate, so I have no way of counting the garages. Some of the biggest frustrations I've heard has been from people calling me on a Saturday. I pulled into a garage and it was full. You know, we don't ha how do I know that? I'll be able to answer that question here shortly in another month or so. The live parking information system will be fully operational later this year. Inside Boulder News is tracking the progress of the project and will report on the completion of the system when it is active. Preserving our community's heritage is an important Boulder value and a local organization is taking on the cause with excitement. Historic Boulder recently launched an effort to stabilize and rehabilitate the Hannah Barker House at 8th and Arapahoe. Much progress has been made already, and a greater vision is in the works. 
much of the work that we've done so far has been really important to the building, but not so much visible to the community. The grant that we applied for will really finish most of the exterior, including restoring. There are five historic chimneys. We're going to restore those chimneys, put back on this wonderful cupola that was on the house when it was first built. So it'll look very much like it did in the early 1900s. And with this finishing the front porch this year and then the exterior renovation next year, people will really notice the difference. This house embodies so much of the early history of Boulder and particularly the life and times of a really remarkable woman. Sometimes we say that she should be the patron saint for political, strong, ambitious women in Boulder because she was unusual for her time, and this is where she lived most of her life. Both Ruth and I are city planners, and as planners, we both really appreciate the importance of retaining aspects of the past um, to deepen what the community can say about itself. It's so important to be able to have places that are markers of the past, um, places that we can, where we can tell the story of how Boulder became the wonderful place that it is and um, remind ourselves that there was a time when Ward was bigger than Boulder. You can track this project's progress and find out more at Historic Boulder's website. Thanks for watching Inside Boulder News. Stay in touch with us on Facebook and Twitter by submitting news tips and questions. You can also sign up to receive video updates right in your inbox. Just go to boulderchannel8.com and click on subscribe.